have a KTM Duke 390 and the speciality of that, this one doesn't have an engine. So you can see over here, the engine is uh, replaced with a motor. Hello, uh -huh. my name is Avinash Kale. I'm basically a system applications head from uh, Infineon. Yeah. I'll just briefly explain you on what we did with this KTM bike. Normal KTM uh, uh, bike which we bought with the internal combustion engine, and we basically removed the internal combustion engine completely and uh, tried electrifying it or engineering product and solutions we built. Okay. So you can see from starting from the headlight, yeah. we have the uh, Infineon products in this headlight with our uh, uh, single chip DC DC converter, which is basically TLD 5098. Okay. Now if we come along. What we have is an inverter here, hey, but okay, yeah, yeah. which is driving this uh, PMSM motor, this VLDC motor. Okay. This is a 5 kilowatt motor, uh, golden motor basically which we bought from outside. Okay. And this inverter is completely built in here uh, with our products. Most of them are our products basically starting from microcontroller which is driving the gate drivers and buffer and then the MOSFETs at the outs outside. Okay. So this is a 5 kilowatt um, inverter. So this is a 5 kilo bike. Five, five kilo. Uh, so what are the torque we can expect from this? You have any so, idea okay. of the torque? Uh, roughly let's say 40, 40 newton, uh, uh, newton meter. 40 newton meters right from the uh, zero RPM, right from where it yeah. begins. Yeah. Exactly. So. so to be very frank, as I, as I mentioned to you, yeah. So we were able to pull it in time. Yeah. And we're just demonstrating it here. After the event, we're pl planning a performance test. So this is a remarkable job done over here, and we can see the engine has been replaced. And so we are expecting a lot of uh, weight reduction happening over here. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we have as we can see, there is no radiator over here. Uh, the engine block has uh, been gone. There is no gearbox here. No wet weight, the lubricants and coolant is not there. Yes, yes. Definitely there is a lot of weight reduction. Again, we haven't weighed it, but definitely there must be a lot of weight reduction. Yeah. So now, as you can see, the batteries, we have kept some of them here. Simply modified the tank, fuel tank, which was existing previously, and some of the batteries are down. Yeah. So okay, besides, so this, this is a lithium polymer? This is a lithium, lithium polymer. Lithium polymer, right. Besides the inverter, we also have a BMS battery management system with our uh, sensing chip, which is basically TL. 8001QK okay. and uh, our microcontroller which is basically taking the data this sensing chip and uh, processing So the end user will get to see the battery data and all so what? Yeah, we also have GUI actually which okay. we can uh, you know give it to customers and they can monitor it with the GUI on you know, different voltage levels of the battery. Yeah, so the definitely. current chip which is here which is basically a 12 channel sensing IC. Okay, 12 channel sensing now. So, uh, what is the uh, capacity of the battery we are expecting here? So, currently, this is, as I mentioned, this is a 48 volt system. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, 12 channel we are managing. Okay. And 2 channel we are managing with our own microcontroller. System. So, okay. this is 14 channel system. And that battery is yet to go on test, so we can uh, yes. see what is the range which is yeah, available. Yeah, I think for. range we, we need to test it. So, okay. we haven't tested it. So, definitely we are expecting a lot of uh, bump in the power to weight ratio of the motorcycle, especially yes. with, the, with this. This is the heart what we are seeing over here. The BLDC motor, it's a 5 kilowatt motor. And the three lines, I think uh, one is for the H uh, three sensor. Phase. So three phase. Three phase and yeah. uh, one will be. Three phase basically. Three phase motor. And it has an hall effect sensor, I think. This has a hall, yes, yes. Okay. So we also have rotor position sensor for sensing the rotor position, rotor position of the motor. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, so we, okay. what we'll do is what we are planning at the end. You see here, there is a threading here. Yeah. So we'll mount the rotor position sensor here. So the rotor position sensor is positioned over there. This here, it's, it's basically a magnet, magnetic angle, angle sensor, okay. which can sense uh, the angular position in 360 degrees. Okay. Yeah. And you'll get the digital output from the uh, rotor position sensor directly, and which we can feed to the inverter. So, so that will also give the RPM data of the. Please sense you. Whatever hall sensor or resol resolver does, yeah, that will do the job for you. Okay. And it's more refined because you you get the ready-made uh, position. So what we are planning is we will basically we will have our rotor position sensor in mounted. Oh. We'll fit it to the end. And the best thing about this is I don't think it needs any kind of maintenance actually. No, definitely not. Yes. Yeah. And besides this uh, rotor position sensor, we have a current sensor for all the three phases. And that's also from Infineon. That's also for, from Infineon. Okay. Uh, again, side sense, uh, sensor. Okay. Throttle position sensor. No. Okay, this is the ride by wire sensor I think. Yes. Basically again. Uh, Angle sensor? Any kind of other sensors you are looking here? Currently, okay. Typically, in any uh, 
passenger vehicle we have like more than 40 plus senses yeah, yeah 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 the typical bike this i think we can easily talk about 20 senses 20 senses which doesn't have an engine because yes. most of the sensors also goes for yes, the engine yes. yeah so that is a predominant market for us actually yeah you know because we have we are very strong in in this kind of senses humanity yeah. senses whether it is a normal hall switch yeah or a latch or a linear position sensor or okay. an angle sensor which can sense you Angle sensor can be used in let's say motor for motor for rotor position as well. It can be used, you know, uh, for fuel sensing in normal combustion engine. So yeah. a lot of sensors we have. Yeah. TPMS. Okay, TPMS. Bikes, yes, we have TPMS as well. What made you go for the KTM 390? Any specific needs? I think the reason was uh, in normal bikes, as you know, as you as you know, they are mostly compact and it's, it's very difficult for you to modify anything. So the KTM was with the KTM, it was very easy for us to just remove this stuff mm. and fit in. Because this is open kind of pipe. Okay, the frame actually, actually helps. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So any change in the gearing you have done? The no, 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 no. Uh, it's a stock. Yeah, we do. I mean, of course, no gears. Uh -huh. We don't need any gear. Okay. okay. So the clutch shaft is, uh, the clutch lever is gone over here. As you can see, there is no clutch lever for you. Yes. And we have even removed the, uh, the display, normal display we are putting. Uh, so this is from engineering? Yeah. So here we can see the display is on, I think. Yes. Uh -huh. Put it there from normal hall switch, mm -hmm. even the side stand or bank angle sensors oh. where normal hall switches can go. Mm -hmm. Here there is and that data sensor. will be available to the end user, I think, that angle sensor. Yeah, yeah, data will be available. We, we are planning to even have this as a product readily available for motor manufacturers. Those okay. who are planning to, you know, uh, have their motors for EV. Okay. We can directly work with some of them mm -hmm. maybe, and give this sensor as a model to them. So they can even build into their motor. Is there any regeneration kind of system we are working over here? The brake regeneration? So we are also working, apart from this is a 5 kilowatt inverter, which yeah. I mentioned. Yeah. Apart from this 5 kilowatt, we are also building a 10 kilowatt inverter. Okay. 10 kilowatt for you know, more power, basically. Uh, as, uh. as you can see even here, uh, we still have some power, uh, power limitation when it comes to integration and all. Yeah. So we are building a 10 kilowatt inverter. Uh, completely from Infineon product portfolio. So that that is definitely we are targeting for like okay, a little powerful bikes. So in future, what uh, is uh, the plan of Infineon? Do you plan to have, make any uh, kind of this uh, end products for the users, or it's only for the manufacturers? As a semiconductor company, we are basically a tier two. Oh, yeah. What we are, what we are trying to do, we are, we are trying to do two things basically. Yeah. We approach OEMs. Hmm. Show them the, the products we have, mm -hmm. and what why we are building the proof of concepts or prototypes is basically convincing uh, to convince them that we have something already ready for you. So this is the possibility. Exactly, this is the possibility. Yeah. Okay. So this is a tier two company and giving giving them the proof of concepts. So mm -hmm. we get a buy-in from OEM, mm -hmm. and then OEM of course then okay, you know can talk to tier ones and push them to use infinite products because we have already something ready. Yeah. They don't have to start uh, start from zero. Zero, right? Right. Thank you so for Thank providing you. all the information. Thank you. Thank it was you. really nice. Thank you. One more time. Fantastic.